Friday morning and the plan that we had to rent a car for a couple of days didn't pan out because we didn't take into consideration the fact that it is the height of summer and nobody has any cars available for two days when they can have them available to somebody who wants to rent it for a week. So we're actually sitting on a bus at Dolmus and uh, we are going to uh, a place called Seljuk and from there we'll get onto a little bus like this and another 10 minute trip to actually take us to the site of Ephesus. Okay, we're inside now. Once you've got past the water cellars uh, and the people who want to give you a personal guided tour, um, getting in is easy. We just use our museum cards Very and quick. straight through, straight straight away. Uh, there are queues if you want to actually buy a ticket, and they're quite small, I would guess. But in the summer season and the height of a normal season, they would be horrendous. Once you are inside, you have the choice as well of purchasing an audio tour guide and you can get them in this little office behind us for 70 Turkish Lira. So we're in now, we've got plenty of water, we're going to go and show you Ephesus. Okay, let's do it. Yes, it looks like a really well spread out site as well, isn't it? Yeah. Looking at the aerial photograph of it. So. Yeah. Apart from that, I don't really know much about it. No. So. mad thought just came into my mind this is like something like a flat pack that you get from Ikea and there's no instructions and bits and pieces are missing <laughs> well I think we'll make that our first stop yeah it's huge mm. We're currently as high as we're allowed to climb due to areas being cordoned off for restoration work and we're actually maybe two-thirds of the way up of the seating levels. Um, like we said this is the biggest amphitheatre we've ever seen and it's in relatively good nick but a lot of that could be down to the restoration work which is obviously ongoing here and uh, quite active. But amazing views We've also got uh, evidence of human occupation on the Ephesus site from 7000 BC. That's the best spot in the whole place. If you like what we're doing here on Sailing ABC, then why not consider becoming a patron? There are many different tiers offering many different rewards, so check out the address on the screen right now and find a tier that's suitable for you. It can cost you less than a cup of coffee a month. Here are some columns that are still on site, but there are some very dark green, very large columns that are in the High Sophia in Istanbul, which were taken from Ephesus. Just looking at the carving in this stone here, it's carved in a 3D effect. You can see the, the two side straps of the helmet in a 3D effect. Absolutely brilliant. Somebody's put a lot of thought and effort into carving that. Now that is impressive. <laughs> This is what I wanted to see since I was a little girl. <laughs> so excited. Okay, so this is the Celsus Library, which can also be called the Herun, uh, because it was built over the burial chamber of the deceased. And what we're actually looking at here is the facade of, of the library. Um, the inside of the library was just plain brick, um, and then covered with, with marble. The library itself was destroyed in uh, an earthquake in 270 AD, so it wasn't rebuilt, and all that was left was the facade, and that just served as a, a beautiful rear wall of a fountain in the street here at Ephesus.
onwards and upwards. That's quite an impressive entrance. The amount of carving detail that's gone into that is amazing. There's even something up there that looks like a little baby elephant. Now I'm not sure, but this could be Greek because it's got the Omega and the Alpha. So, Nico, if you could uh, translate that and tell us what it says, be appreciated. Don't know who that was, but uh, they lost their head over something. <laughs> Look at the pipes. Yeah, some water sort of sewage. water supply yeah. system or sewage drainage system. Yeah. Really well made. Look, so they had fitted into each one. Yeah. So there's no leaking. Very clever. Yeah. Seems quite odd to us in this day and age, but it was quite a popular charitable thing to do to gift things of beauty to cities. This is the Nympharium Triani. Probably got that wrong. Basically, it's just a fountain building donated by Tiberius Claudius Ariston and his wife between AD 102 and 114 to honour Artemis of Ephesus and Emperor Trajan. This is what it would have looked like when it was originally built and that is just because it's a fountain. As I'm walking around Ephesus I'm seeing lots of different bits and pieces of rock that we recognise from other ancient sites that we visited and it's quite obvious that they're just haphazardly placed. Um, again, it's like putting together a big jigsaw without an actual picture to look at. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that those pieces there didn't all originally go together like that. And this thing here has definitely been reconstructed. But if it's uh, a close reconstruction to the original, then it's still quite impressive. And again, this is just a monument and a fountain dedicated to a person. We're coming to the upper gate area of Ephesus and the crowds are thinning here. Uh, the heat, the midday heat is absolutely horrendous. I feel as though I just, just walked into a shower with my clothes on. It's an amazing sight though, Bath, isn't it? Like, it's huge. It's huge. It is yeah. massive and it would take you know more hours than we've got yes. to take it all in. Yeah. Uh, up here near the um, up a gate there is a smaller amphitheater we're not going to climb up that one because in comparison to the other one <laughs> it's a blip in the park these are the things we like to see uh, we are close to that small amphitheater there and I guess that's the city wall and an entrance and uh, we've just walked all the way up that slip, slippery slope there's the big amphitheater we haven't been down this bit yet which will take us to the water, I guess, or maybe the water's not there anymore. And uh, then if you travel that way along that path, you get to the entrance way where we came in originally. And just up there, you can see a stadium. And I'm betting your bottom dollar that is a full-size stadium. So scale it up 500 times and you've got the real thing. Right. Entering town and seeing this in its heyday with all the columns in place and all the stonework intact would have been a very impressive sight indeed. Floor. Yeah, it is super impressive. The camera won't pick it up, but basically this is teeny teeny tiles and it runs all the way down there. It's quite a complex um, pattern as well. Yeah. It's amazing. Looking at these trees, and again, you probably won't get the scale of them from the camera, but they are absolutely huge. It's 
the Cicada Sanctuary. Okay, this uh, rather large ruin is the Church of Mary, Jesus' mum. Yeah, apparently after, you know, things went south, um, <laughs> she went travelling and came to Ephesus as one of the parts of her travels. And I think the church has been built here in honour of her visiting. Whether she had a church, you know, that she had built when she was here, I don't know. That's, but that's what I've done. Okay, let's have a look. flat bricks in their construction, like that. Yeah, because yeah. they could easily mass produce those bricks quite easily. Yeah, and stack them up and then just concrete between them. Then, yeah, <laughs> put the nice stuff on the outside and who knows the difference? We do, because we can see what you did. We know! So sadly it looks like most of the splendour of this construction has been removed and uh, reused somewhere else, but obviously we can still see the base construction with the, the clay bricks. But as a church, it's massive. So many layers to it. layers I'm thinking cake now I'm hungry <laughs> <laughs> And gone. Somebody's been cheating here. <laughs> I don't think they used to construct like that. I think that's partly what the reconstruction team are doing now is they they're actually taking away the um, old types of reconstruction that don't fit in with how this place was built and they're actually rebuilding it properly with uh, materials that are in keeping with the materials that they used when they originally built it. Don't fall down that hole base. No, I'll try not to. It's not very big anymore. But it looks like it's at the bab people. I was going to say that, yeah. So it looks like you can step down there, get your baptism done here, and walk out, cleanse the other side. Let's see if we can get rid of my sins. Splash, splash, splash. Oh! <laughs> that is so blasphemous. Apologies to all. <laughs> Crosses carved into the stone faces all the way around this.
That's pretty cool. Now this is interesting. This may or may not have been an original um, floor tile, and it's a pretty big piece of stone for a tile, but it is on the floor. But obviously it's got that surround, um, and it's incomplete. But if we look over here, there's another part with the surround, and there's more over there. But the interesting thing is, whatever was inscribed here has been deliberately erased. Hmm. Didn't like his spelling, obviously. <laughs> Here's another piece, again, deliberately erased. Here's another bit of a bigger piece that's not been erased. And here, with water in the bottom, is a well. Yeah, very important thing in those days. Yeah, water source. That just about wraps up our tour around Ephesus, or as it's called here, Ephes. Ephes, that rings a bell. Mm -hmm. If you enjoy these long form videos of the ancient sites that we visit, then show us some encouragement by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. Catch you next time.